Yum yum. Okay, it's running fine now. Just having the music on the background, and um, I will switch to the scene with Modo open. So it's um, it's a Q and A session. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask on the on the chat, uh, and I will try to reply to to your questions. Uh, I would work on the cut data, uh, so I will switch to the scene. Yeah, okay, I'm on the scene. I will open back uh, the electronic uh, parts that I have took from some cut files, and uh, from that I will uh, explore some cleaning process uh, onto this uh, those different meshes. So um, the scene is built with many different items and the poly count is not so high, but yeah, it maybe needs some cleanup. Um, I will also work on two those uh, in order to use them into a, a low poly um, work workflow also. So I will probably do two different types of um, meshes, one uh, high poly and one with the UVs uh, un unwrapped and the low polygon um, release of it. So, okay, so um, what we can start now, we can probably take a look at the shading. So I've, um, I've just ungrouped the different uh, so I've used uh, the tagger tagger um, plugin uh, the kit from Adam O'Hearn uh, that was really interesting for just regrouping the different um, materials because usually in CAD data you have plenty of materials with tags and it's a mess uh, sometimes and they are not sharing the same uh, material even if they have same color like those. So I've just um, cleaned, cleaned this up uh, before, uh, just by opening the, the SOLIDWORKS uh, file and starting cleaning this into 12.2, uh, because I didn't use uh, any more uh, DARA on the 13 release, but yeah, here I'm here running the so it's in release. Um, so uh, what I will do, uh, so probably one thing is really interesting with the, the latest release we've, we've got with uh, Moto that was probably on the 12, but the, um, the threshold, uh, bounding box threshold uh, switch, when, so when you are moving inside a scene and you want to get quick feedback and, and no delay, uh, that's really interesting because it's really convenient and with you see bounding box it's it's fine uh, it can be uh, really useful for high poly count so i will start um, doing some cleaning uh, on maybe those those ship sets um, i will probably uh, clean them up and maybe replace those uh, to create some procedural um, modeling on of, of those um, you know, to have plenty of variation of size and um, yeah. Okay, so um, I need to clean those probably. So I will just roughly start with maybe those, and I'll probably just do some cleanup uh, on different uh, pieces. So I will just make a test and just export those and move them into a new scene just to make things more um, uh, quicker. Uh, if you work into a bigger scene like this one, it might be uh, slower uh, than usual. So I prefer to do that. Um, so I will move those at bottom side into the next scene. Okay, I hope the music is not too loud. Uh, I'm 
I've already uh, created some recording to see if it's okay, but if there's any issue, there, there's any uh, problems with this, you can uh, tell me on the chat. Okay, so um, I will so drag and drop the shaders. There's no children, but there's PCs. So what I, I will probably do for them, for all of them, is checking first the center. So you see the center, the center uh, of the item is at the center of this box. Okay, so if you are working for placing them, uh, or if you want to prepare your work and drag and drop the item and automatically place it, uh, like with the preset browser and drag and drop a mesh item into uh, onto a, an object, uh, it might just be intersecting with the with the, the PCB uh, plate. So I will probably change the position of those. First, I will move them into position. So I will go back, maybe close the first scene. I will not change it uh, anymore, just for the reference. Okay, so We'll probably re rename those also. Um, I will maybe grab the first uh, part of it because it it seems to be related to the numbers of pin on the on the electronic uh, chipset. So I will do this and name them A B C D etc. Okay, so um, should rename those with a kit, but the last kit I was using uh, is not working anymore on the certain release. I should check this uh, later on, but I will do this way. That's that's quicker uh, as I expected. Didn't have any, I mean, many stuff here, so it's okay just for 10, 10 kind of uh, elements. So E, F, Okay, so we have the different meshes, and so I will take a look at those and open my menu. Uh, so here you see they are all triangulated, okay? Um, it can be a mess, so for me, uh, for the purpose of this, um, this video is to clean up this, um, this kind of uh, element where you have many triangles. If you want to do some edits, uh, you are wasting your time selecting the different um, areas. So what I will do is probably launch my uh, my kit, my uh, CAD uh, toolkit. So I will use, I will probably switch the keyboard. Uh, so let me change this just a minute. I will change that. Okay, so I will show the screen. Okay, so it's on the screen now. You see there's a keyboard. I will probably move this a bit here. Okay, on the right side. Maybe on the top, yeah, that might be better. I can probably remove the um, information uh, all, all around. So I will check this and remove the viewport uh, show co controls and information so you see i can get more space for the for the keyboard uh, so i will move this here maybe get it that it's smaller it might be okay yeah that's okay we we'll love that okay we are running so um now what i will do is launching the CAD toolkit. So I use Control Alt, Control Alt H. Uh, as you can see, it just pops up the menu, the Pi menu. So there's no undo on this one. So I will probably save the scene first uh, before making some mess. Um, we'll save this here. Temps. Electronics. Okay. Electronic and Electro C 
Okay, we'll make, make a folder. Chipsets. So the chips uh, are PDIP. PDIP chipsets. Didn't care really too much about the name, but just wanted to get things uh, more organized. Um, so I'm saving on the side on my second second screen. Okay, so now that's named, that's saved. I can process the data. So I will clean up all the um, triangles on the different x, y, and z axes. So it will clean up basically every faces that is pointing uh, on the top here. So I, I will show the normals just to make things more readable for you. Okay, so now we see, yeah, for every faces that are pointing into this direction, we will clean this up also here, also here, also here, probably. So yeah, it's really simple. So click here, clean up to end on, on X, Y, Z axis. So there's no undo, as I said, so it clean up the top, it basically merged uh, every faces that is pointing on the different um, axes. So I can do this, then I can detriangulate here with this uh, scripts. Um, and I will probably clean up this mess uh, just a bit. Okay, so I will process all of those first because that's a basic and tedious uh, stuff. So I cannot process them all um, at once. So I will do this just uh, for the few here and there, selecting them, clean up, detriangulate, etc. So the bigger, uh, of course, the bigger the mesh is, the longer it took, but it's, it's fine. It's really fast. Didn't have the poly count now, but it should be okay. Okay. So now as those are processed, uh, okay, we can start maybe aligning and recenter those. So if I take those uh, elements, as you can see, those elements at the center, at the center of the ship set itself, not the base of it. So I will do this, um, use a different macro to change the position of the center. So in my case, I go to Setup, Center Tools, and I can move the center to a polygon selection. So I first need to select the polygon. So I will select the bottom side, go to Setup, Center Tools, move to Center to Poly. And now it, you see just offsets into this uh, center of the polygon. So I will do this on every, every one there just to clean up, clean this mess up. Okay. I will just use the record macro uh, system just to make things more quicker uh, because I have um, a shortcut key. Oh, I have the menu here. That, so you might didn't see correctly the, the keystroke. Um, we'll do that. Okay. Didn't need much more this area. Change this and move the keyboard a bit. Get more space. Okay, that should be enough. Okay, um, so as I said, I will record the macro and I will just record the macro that I'm using uh, one of those uh, menus. So setup, center tools, move center to polygons. And now I stop the recording macro and now I can just select one mesh, uh, select a set of polygons. So here I have few insets here that are a bit different. So what I will do is selecting just those two edges on both sides to get the size. And I will use the same macro, so Control Alt R, and it will process the same macro. 
and it's centering the, the center at the correct position. So it works also on the edges. You can see, you can select this one, use two to select the edges and launch the macro. Oops, set up, center tools. You see it works. So we'll do this also on this one. Set up center tools. Okay, so now we're good to go. We might uh, center them all to zero. Okay, so now they overlap. Um, I will switch them to invisible if I didn't select them. Okay, so that's better. Just working one at a time. Um, so as you can see, it works really well, but maybe I will remove those kind of elements here. So everything is linked, okay? It's like uh, it's like the way you do some Boolean operation and you union everything. So everything is connected. Um, this is not the way I want uh, the model to be. Um, don't know if I t spell it correctly, but anyway. Um, I will just select this polygon and launch a, a macro here that is deleting, deleting the edges into the same sharing um, normal island. So here we have one triangle uh, and those here are facing in the, into the same direction, right? So I can remove those just by selecting one, um, one polygon and removing this. I will probably remove the shading here because it's difficult to see correctly. Yeah, it's better this way. I will change the base material if I didn't mess up my settings uh, for the real time. Okay, no, that's okay. I get weights by polygon area and the smoothing angle setup. So it's fine. Okay, so it's better to see now. I will launch this one. So by two degree, it will look at the, all the faces that are connected to it and clean them up. So now we have just one uh, faces here. So if I isolate this one, you see that still the um, collinear um, points are uh, retained. Okay, so. We should clean this up still with just a few actions. So what I will do is selecting the bottom side, same thing, clean this up, same thing here. Okay, so now that's that's much more better. Um, we've seen that we've got some cutout. Ah, it's not on this one. This one is cleaner. Yeah, that's cleaner. Um, I will select more, select less. Now that I have the top, I will cut this out, paste it and hide it. So now I will, I will isolate just the ship, the cases, uh, the case of it. Okay, Control X, Control V, H. Maybe remove those, we didn't need those anymore. Okay, and one thing that is interesting with this um, system of selection is that you can select uh, the similar uh, faces on on the um, on the layer itself. So every faces that is pointing this way, I will select them those. So I will go to select. This is my um, game content uh, kit. Select complete tool. So this one was uh, one of the scripts from uh, Seneca that is still in use. I used this one from about since the 30, the, the 3 re -re release of model. Uh, so 300, 301. <laughs> it's about 10 years ago now, but yeah, still really useful. So select, select similar in layer. Now we have a selection of all the different faces that are pointing into this direction. So it's much more easier for selecting things this way. I will move the bottom side. 
and get it close. We'll do the same thing here. We have a face here that is pointing this way. And we will also select similar into this layer. Okay. The lasso tool is really interesting for this kind of work. Okay, so you might say, okay, that's just um, cloned uh, element here, and here we have just extremity. So, of course, we will just uh, clean those and create a procedural mesh out of this. So, probably what I will do here is removing those and just clean up one, one part. Okay. So, I will take a look here. So do we have a regular beaver? So here I must maybe go back and get the visibility of informations. Yeah, okay, I will do this way. Still the information in the viewport is really important to, to get. Um, there's invaluable uh, information. You can get some information also on the statistics, uh, this, the stats here, but yeah, that's probably better to have the information over there. So here we have nine polygons and here we have less polygons. We have, oh no, nine, that's fine. So what I will do probably is re removing those uh, elements. So I will hide this, hide the bottom side, okay, select this, and I and delete. So now we have just the starting point and the ending point. I will use my um, Bevel tool, I will call it with Ctrl Shift, Ctrl Shift V. Yeah, Control Shift B, and with my keyboard, top and bottom on the arrow, I can add some division. So I will do yeah about five to be correct. We'll do it this way. Um, <clears throat> so here we have engons, of course, because we've cleaned those up uh, before with this action. So now I will reconnect this, remove the edges. So now we are good to go. Oh, there are still some polygons here. I maybe lost them. Okay, and do, ah yes, of course we didn't remove the collinar vertex. Um, so shift A, now as we can see, Correctly the vertices. Oh, sorry, I changed a few parts. I go to inactive. Okay. Okay, make things bigger. Okay, so those two polygons. Convert to vertex, remove the extremity, and that's all. Delete, reconnect. So I will do this here, we we'll do this there. Can do a mirror, but yeah, I will probably do the mirror now. So selecting those, isolate. Go to the top view and using the origin for the alignments. And what is that? The shift C, if I remember. Yeah. Okay, so we cut this way and we go on zero on the Z. Perfect. So just removing half part of it. So 
Seems to be okay. Can delete. And now I will reconnect those here. Oops, that's this one. Okay, now we are good to go. Can reconnect everything. I probably remove the center, uh, the center edge because it cut this one also. It's fine. So just selecting this um, this edge, I will launch my macro also for the mirror. We mirror uh, from edge axis. Here it is. It's connected in one piece. Okay, so. If I get a look at the edges, I will maybe clean this this way. So removing this and use also one of the kit that I really like. Uh, uh, where is that? Oh, it's not enabled. Okay, model Yama. Why I didn't install this one? Reopen. Oh, okay, it's back. So I will open back the scene. And here under the kit, you see you have a little llama, model llama. So when you open this one, you will get this um, this uh, menu. There are some tools for the UVs and, and stuff, but I'm using mainly the triangulate. Uh, whoops, not now. The triangulate action. So what I will do here, instead of selecting this and do a triangulate this way. Oh, okay. So on this one it looks fine. Maybe on this one that's this way it. It shows the triangulate, the basic triangulate in model. So, just to show you, if I do this with the triangulate, it tries to get more, or I can say, more homogeneous uh, or uniform uh, distribution. So, especially for end guns, you will see on different elements, but for end guns, it will uh, process the um, triangulate much better than the one that is in model. So I'm using this one uh, usually. Okay, so it should be okay now. I can use the quadruple probably here. Where is that? I didn't use this one uh, too much. Yeah, it's there. Okay, no, that's not. <laughs> You see, that's really not the way it should triangulate. Okay, the standard mode here works better. It's different algorithm, so it's up to you. Um, so here we have probably the low polygon mode, low polygon object. I will just still uh, cut those just to guide the quadruple onto this end goal. Ah, here we still have those edges. We we'll remove them. But we've done yeah we've done the cleanup here so I will didn't do the cleanup on those just on on one side. Okay so again one thing is interesting with Moto is if you have a selection and you want to cut, you cannot cut outside, it's, it's limiting. So sometimes it's really interesting to have some control over uh, how it's working on. So I will just remove those and clean this with just five new Rebeaver uh, workflow. Okay, so. We say it five, we are five. But we still have some edges here. It's 
want to see. Sometimes you can get some weird things like this in the CAD uh, file, so that's really important to get those clean uh, back. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just ma making some selection of the hard edge, uh, I mean, to harden those polygons. Mm, we'll see to change the, the music. Just do a more quicker. Oh, that's a music for um, for advertising. <laughs> yeah, that's really fun. Okay, this one is better probably. Okay, um, so I will open the normal tools. So I will set this as our edge. Ah, I need to convert probably uh, the system. No, not this menu. That's this one modeling vertex normal tools. So I will select every object that we have in the scene because also on those we will work the same way. Um, so modeling vertex normal. Pin this here and convert, remove everything. And now, if I go back to this one and select the out edge, this is what we have. So it's totally a mess. <laughs> it's not the way uh, I want the shading to happen. So I will add those to the selection. Here and here. So here it's clean. Should remove those. Should remove those. Okay, seems to be okay. Okay, it looks fine. So if you press Control, you can override uh, all the the um, data uh, so you can harden the selected and all those that are not selected will be softened so that's really fine so this is the way I wanted the shading to happen that's fine it's working now go back to advanced yeah that's much more brighter a bit too much maybe <laughs> Just lower the lights. Okay. Um, so what I will do is probably isolate this one as a unique um, element. So just to prepare things, we have extremity on both sides. So probably we will do a mirror on both sides. I will just remove this one. And so here basically we have a box and Related to this box with a with a little offset here, we will put the extremity. Okay, and with this in mind, we will also create some <coughs> cloned uh, pin in between those two uh, extremity. So what I will do, um, probably to make this uh, procedural, is to isolate those first. Um, so here, probably I will work on the eye poly first and make a low poly model uh, after, so I can probably delete those. We'll clean this up after, or refine it. Okay, so I will cut this and paste it into a, a new mesh. Okay, so now I will. So the way the um, connection will be will happen is probably on the top. So what I will do is position the center of this mesh here at the selection. 
So here we are. I will add the other meshes and turn this back to my regular viewports. Okay. So now as we have this, we just move this here and I will open the MeshOps advanced uh, layout. So here I will probably remove the keyboard. Yeah, it's better. So we are at this really small um, size, as you can see, one square on the grid is one millimeter. So even if we are working with millimeters, this way we, we, we have a sense of size, okay? So I will stay with this one. Even if I'm working with meters, uh, I can use the millimeter uh, type uh, characters to um, define the size. But this is one thing I want to get into model. Um, so I will probably do this way. I will create just one mesh that will be empty. And I will call my um, mesh fusion submenu. Didn't need those, so I will just um, make them smaller. Kind of free change the size of this yeah that should be better this way so here we have the, the case the case of a specific size right and we will use this size with a mesh info uh, node so to drive the process of this um, procedural modeling so what i will do is i have a one item here this one also I need to um, make it uh, and, and put this one into another layer. Oops, sorry, I do a new scene that was not my intent. Okay, so here we have the extremity. So the extremity is basically the same thing as this one, but cut, right? So if we just work with this one, that should be probably better. So this way we can create different kind of shapes of pin, uh, even if there's <laughs> probably just one type um, for every ship set. But if we want to make some change on this, we can probably start from this and make the center and the extremity part of it. So what I will do here is moving this to the zero position. Maybe move this here into the schematic and I will add a node info. So here I'm using the Team Croissant um, pop-ups menu so that's really easy to add a node uh, like this. Just have to press tab and click. Oops, I'll do this again. Do some, yeah, press enter. Uh, so I will now link those. And so here now I'm sending the information of the of this uh, item. So if I show the for the dimension of those, we we'll toggle the dimension. We have some information there that is embedded into this mesh, of course, this because it's defined by his, by his bounding box. So the bounding box information is there. Um, we have the side, we have the center, bounding box, mean, and max. So what we will use here is creating a new cube that will represent the different clone of the pin in, in between here and the extremity. So for example here I will, I will create a cube so I can just click here and add a cube 
it automatically add it, add it to the uh, schematic and instead of having to do this here type in cube press ok and then drag and drop and to add it so I made this uh, little sub menu that's much more quicker um, so now as we have a cube we have a cube one meter by one meter by one meter okay right so this is not the way we want uh, it to, to be uh, modeled so I will select the size here and drag and drop them here so I select the channel and drag and drop them here so the, what I will do is select the center I will probably separate this so here we have the center of the mesh information and here we have the cube so the cube will be subdivided the amount of time we need the pin so I will move the center here so center X Y and Z here and the size of it so the center here that is defined here is not the center of the position of the of the mesh okay you, you can see we have a center of for this mesh that is correctly at zero 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 at the origin but here we are getting the center of the bounding box itself so we hide this just to let you understand so here probably the center is this is a bit up from this one okay so of course the center here is not the same center as the center of the mesh item that define the position here anyway um <laughs> we'll not mess up this too much um so now as we have this we can see that the cube that we have made is now embedded into i mean the ship set is embedded into this cube so we just have for example to do some stuff here so what i will do is basically the the cube itself uh, will create um, pin on the side and on the on the white on the width uh, position on both sides here on the longest uh, part of it of course you didn't have some pin here right it's always on the longest part of it so what I will do is probably define that this is the, the starting point of the model so I will add a delete um, node so I can do this way but I can also use the team cross on um, uh, pop-up it works also so here we are adding some select by an index so we will add some index to the selection I should show the cost mode go back to the advanced and now we can see we have a selection so the delete is in vertex mode so I will move change it to polygon select the index and now I can select maybe the top the bottom the front and the back and just get the right hand side right right and left side uh, visible so I set those and so I really re remove those different parts okay on both sides so you can do this way and after add an axis drill uh, not axis drill, axis slice so I'm drag and dropping this again here um, and here we will divide this on the y, the x-axis right so we will add some subdivision because for example if I do the, the setup as I expected uh, for example I will so we, we have the case here I will rename this case and we have the pin right where is the pin it's on a different mesh it's this one okay so 
we rename this one, not with enter, because I didn't got Dara here. Um, so this one is pin prototype. So instead of instancing stuff or using the clone tool to duplicate this one, I would prefer to I prefer to use replicator. Because you can add much more replicator than what you can do with clone tool. The clone tool is a bit slower than the, re the replicator uh, method. So here we have, I should drag and drop the prototype here. We have a prototype and we have basically the sources for the replicator here. So if I let you understand, we will duplicate n times those pins on this face. But to make this, we need to subdivide this one because if I add a replicator, so I add a replicator, we have now a replicator in the scene. I connect the prototype to the pin, right? And the particle source to this. So as you can see now, it's replicating the pin on the point, just on the point. So th this is not what we, we are looking for. Can be interesting, but not this time. So we select the replicator and goes to source mode. And here we select use polygon with connectivity. And here you can see there is some transformation happening. So it's always using the normal. So as you can see, the pin is pointing downwards. So minus Y. And as you can see here, here it's representing the same things uh, here. So the Y axis define the positive and the outside of the, of the, the elements. So what I should do here is probably select all those polygons, go into the uh, origin um, item center and rotate by 90 degrees. Okay, and now we are correctly pointing in the good direction, the Y positive, and it's correctly placing. So now, as we have this, we didn't need to see this element. So we have now a pin that is placed on both sides. So what is cool here is that you have the mirror also embedded into the replicator system. So this is really interesting this way. Um, so if I want now to have much more pin here, I probably need to cut it. So if I go here onto the axis slice of this part, I will cut this using the world transform. Well, maybe not because that's at the position 000, so it's okay, I can go this way. Uh, and on the number, I will add on the X axis specific numbers. And as you can see, what what is a bit uh, disturbing with replicators, I think that this is not probably a bug because here we are using the method as I said, um, use polygons with connectivity. So if you have just one polygon, there is no connectivity with the neighbor uh, polygons because here there is no, there is no no neighbor uh, at all. So what I will uh, do probably is maximize this number, the number of, oops, not on this one, the X the number of um, duplication over there. So imagine that this is the extremity here and here. Okay, and here we have the center. So probably what we will do later on is to um, separate the extremity and, uh, and uh, the in-between pins, right? Because we have not the same model at the pin than at the in-between. 
as we've seen before on different models. Let's check them. They are hided. Okay, so as you can see, yeah, the pin at the extremity is different. So what I will do is probably limiting the axis slice to be at least two. But when I say two, it's two cuts. Okay, so we have two cuts here. So if we want to get a relation correct between this number and those number of pins, this is not correct. So what we will do is moving everything here into an assembly. I will, uh, oops, I will do this, select them all and create an assembly. So we'll call this ship, ship set. And we'll call this as, yeah, as, badass, because that's an assembly. Um, anyway, so now as we have, I will close this, we have the assembly here. We can now add some inputs. And so I will select the axis slice here, select the X axis and drag and drop this channel into the schematic. So now I can def connect this one to the input. But if I do this, I cannot define the maximum number, the maximum and the minimum number of this uh, integer. Okay, that's an integer. We cannot get 2.2. That's impossible. We are cutting with integer. So I will create a new input and select integer here and say, okay, so this is the um, number of pin or pin count. Pin count, um, pin count. Just pin count. After we will probably change this. So I will set the minimum and the maximum. And why I do this? Because you cannot go back after you've set up. Uh, uh, um, if, for example, if you create the the um, the input with just this. So for example, I d say default uh, five. If I go back and I if I want to oops, if I want to edit again this channel, you see I couldn't change those values, the minimum and the maximum value. I, I, I cannot understand why, but it's a limitation I didn't like. Um, anyway, I hope the developers are hearing, but I already reported this. Um, it should be really interesting and really convenient to have some editing access to everything. Even if you want to mini define a minimum or maximum, you, you should. You should do it because if not, you just have to delete the channel, recreate the channel, set the minimum and the maximum. And if you have any links that is connected to it, you need to reconnect everything. And that's a mess. That's really tedious. So anyway, I will go to integer and we go back and define pin count. And from that, I will say, okay, we have an integer and the default will be five. In my case, I will say five and use minimum value. It will be two. And now we didn't define the maximum because we can go further than this. Um, so we didn't care, but we still have the minimum defined. So now if I define five into the count, it's five cuts. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five cuts. So what we will do is just add, also select this node, this link, sorry, and use the basic mathematics add, and we will add one, uh, minus one, sorry. So subtract, subtract one. So now we have five that is coming here. Then we are removing one and we have four. And so we have four cuts. And now we have one, two, three, four, five kit pin. So as you can see, um, regarding to the, to the mesh, uh, to this mesh, 
it's making some mess here because of the orientation and the, the index of those points. So if you take a look here, I will show the index, the indies, okay, sorry, indies, that's the same. So we have an order that is for, hmm, maybe change the size of the vertex, you cannot see correctly, so 0, 9, 8, 4, okay, that's a bit of a mess here, it's not really correctly related, so 12, 13, 14, 15, okay, so that, that's a bit strange, and here we have something similar, okay, anyway, so what I will do is probably work on just one side and we will do the mirror in a different way. So I'm using the um, polygon um, connectivity, but here, as you can see, it's making some mess. So probably we will not do this way. Mm, okay, I, I have different solution. Um, I can create a new mesh and create just one point. Okay, so I have one, one mesh selected here. I will select the vertex tool, click here. So now I have one vertex and I will move this vertex to the origin, okay? So now we have one vertex, just one mesh with one vertex in it. So what I will do is rename this one, vertex, and drag and drop this one here. So I will process the system a bit differently. We will not use the axis slice. So what is cool here, as you can see, is that the input is still there, even if I deleted this one, because we created a specific user channel. If we were um, to, to uh, select just the input and connect this to the input here and delete this one, of course we will, we will uh, lost this um, input because the node is not there. So here, we have this system. So probably now I will select this vertex and use the array. So we will do a clone, basically. Um, array should be okay. Array, you have plenty of possibilities. That looks the same for this kind of stuff. So we have an array with an array generator and we have a vertex. So we cannot see the vertex, so I will open them back. And also display them always. So you see, Okay, we have one, one point actually, but in the array, I will not do count on Y and on Z, I will do some count on X. So the count here, I will drag and drop the count here and reconnect to the pin count here. But now we have five points that are overlaying. So what I will do, is add an offset. Oh, okay, the offset is one. So if you zoom out, yeah, you will got every one meter, one unit in model, you will got the point. So this is not what we want. We want something more like one millimeter or two. Okay, so now we have one, two, etc. We have the points over there. So, if I want to be sure with the um, axis, okay, <laughs> anyway, there's plenty of solution. Uh, we will do this way and we will do another way also here um, for the replicator. So anyway, now we have a mesh that is entirely composed by vertex, so you, you can still use the dimension tool 
right? If you select the dimension, you have some dimension from here to here. So the um, in-between uh, distance for everything, every different point, is the same as this if you check between. So here we can say we work relative to the different uh, pin one for each one by one sorry um, for each each of them there's in between uh, distance that is two millimeters or you can say I want 10 for 10 millimeters I want five uh, point so it's up to you you can do this way I will stay on this mode so we have the vertex we can use those vertex to feed the replicator. So I will create an, a duplicate one of this one. Oops, sorry, I made a mistake. So duplicate, duplicate node. So now I will use the same prototype, but for this one, I will use the vertex as a point source. And here now I couldn't use now the use polygon, I need to use po points data. So as you can see, it's a bit different the way it works. A point is always looking on the, the Z apparently or on the no, on the Y. So you can select back uh, the prototype. I will go back and get the grid. Okay, so we will rotate this again. Okay, so we go to go. And now, if we select the replicator, we have correctly those pins that duplicate along the same direction. So we can do this way. Um, well, it's okay. We can do this way. Even if I select this object and rotate it nine, um, 180 degrees, it will not realign re those in a specific direction. So we can do this way and make the mirror after, after all. So this is the solution. We will call this the solution b so i will move this here create some backdrops so we will use the similar the, the same prototype but with with both uh, different setup so as you can see the replicator we have a vertex that is duplicated along a specific distance but now the center is still here okay so if the center is still here, it's not in between. I will move this center here. So all I can do is I can create a new mesh here. I will add a merge mesh and connect this one. And now we have a vertex a mesh uh, that have specific distance 8 in our case and this is defined by the array count here and the number and the offset so the offset is here so uh, what I will do is create a new mat node multiply and connect the count to the offset and now we have distance okay the distance we've got for the vertex here that's it that is eight millimeters will be this so here it's counting five times two millimeters but in our case we have one two three four in between space so this is not 
what we have uh, in the in the result. So the result here is about 10. So it's like we need to duplicate this element, change this to subtract one, and we will connect the count to this and reconnect here. So now we have a count of five minus one and multiply by two. So now we have the correct size, eight millimeters. But still one, two, three, four, five replicator. So from this, I will move the mesh by a specific distance, but negative, right? So not this one, what I do. This one we will move. That's better. So we can move this one on the X, not positive, but minus. So to do this, we will just add a new node and multiply by minus one, just to invert the value. And not minus minus one, but minus 0 0.5. We can divide by minus two. It's okay. So now we have a centered element, right? Okay, so I will connect to this one instead. So now we have the replicators and we have our duplicated uh, uh, element here. So, of course, if we are in the assembly and adding count, we are getting a longer size. So, we have five. So, this is the solution one, okay? We have the size of this box that is defined here. So, we have the case. The case have a mesh info and it's creating a cube in a different mesh. The size is here, okay, 6.35 millimeters. So we will get this information from here, size. So this is the size on the Z, right? And fit this into the replicator. That is here. So this replicator needs to move on the Z. Right? So here I will use the size on the Z and connect to here. So of course I need to divide this by 2, right? Or I can use the mm, bounding box. Um, maximum on the z okay because this is the positive z and this one is the negative z so i will do this way a bit different but it prevents to get one more node and of course the position on the on the y axis should be also uh, managed so the replicators now need to get moved on the y by a specific amount and this amount now needs maybe the center so center y okay so now we are stitching correctly the case with the replicator correctly right so of course for example if i select Oh, I have a strange behavior with the vertic vertices that are displaying. That's the vertices from the replicator. But anyway, we'll hide the vertices. So control one, toggle vertices. Okay, so I will select those polygons. And what is interesting here is now we can move this and the pins are pinned. 
<laughs> the pins are pins. Um, pins, uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so now we have a ship set that is not complete, of course. And now we can select, for example, um, the prototype we've made here. So usually what I do from this point is defining some curls. Um, so I use my Shift F1 basic menu. I will put this here and I will save the scene first. Oh, save incremental, it should be okay. Better. So now that I have this, I will define that. Okay, the replicators are basically this color. So magenta. Okay, why do this didn't work? Um, if I save, I close this and open it again. I have a strange behavior with this script. Didn't look at the, the chat, <laughs> sorry. Didn't know if there's any questions, anyone? Okay, that's fine. <sighs> so, I hope that now I will create a new scene. Just add the mesh, select the mesh, define the color. Okay, so here it's working. Don't know why it's working sometimes, sometimes not. I will open back the menu, the scene, goes back to the assembly, select one node, select the kernel. Okay, it's working. Why? 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 Don't know why. I want to know. It's working here. What the hell is that? Uh, anyone? A anyone know? Please tell me. Okay, so we have the background, a backdrop here. So those are both the different replicators. So this one is the solution. Okay, I will say solution A, B. Sorry, we create an, an, another solution. The one that we have started before. Solution A. Okay. So. Where are the sources? The sources will be always white. So this way I know that every source mesh is white. Okay. So this one is much more a temporary mesh. Vertex composition, composite or array. I would say array. I have already um, an assembly aliases for this, but wanted to start from scratch. This is just one line, so this one will be different. We'll start with the red. This one is the case, so this one also is a source mesh. And this is the base, okay. Okay, so that's fine. We have now the second mesh that was the particle source of the solution A. Please rename. Okay, solution A particle source. Okay, we have this, we have that, this one also is a particle, particle source, we rename this this way, okay, so this one also will be read this way, I know what are the, what are the replicators, the replicas, replica sources. 
Okay, so fine. We have the prototype here. So the second solution is different. So I will add the B part. So as we've said before here, we can delete also this one. So just work on one side. And I will add this one. Is it working? Okay, so we'll select them again. It looks like it add. Okay, so now that's okay. We have just one face. Probably in order to be sure that the order is correct and not changing anymore on those vertex uh, in the, in this index or anything. Um, I will create just a cube, a flat cube this way. So I will not plug the um, Z. So the Z will be zero, right? And we will offset this on the position. So position Z will also be different. So we've used the position Z here is over there. It's the bounding box max Z. So I will use this here and plug this to polygon Z, position Z. And so now, if I'm not bad, um, can I see the mesh please, what I've made? I've deleted everything with this one. Yeah, of course, because I created just one face with one cube. Okay, so now we have just one face and instead of using the axis um, slice, we will use the segments here. So that, that should be better. And you see that the order will not pop up again because the axis uh, slice was really not preserving the orientation. So what I will do here we have two different replicators. One is using this one that is directly correct. Okay, oh, what's the name? Print prototype. And it it's not using the, the prototype transform, but I will use the prototype transform on this one. And this way you can maybe select the prototype, rotate it. Yes, and now I have the correct orientation. So maybe rotate on a different axis also, the Y. Okay, so now that that's good, we have two different solutions. We have one like this that can be incremented, increments by this. So now uh, I should connect the assembly pin count to the cube segments on X, right? So here we have five. Okay, so that's a bit different, as you can see. Um, so I will probably stop this uh, stream. It's about one hour and a half. I will probably continue next. Um, yeah, I didn't um, take a look at the Ryzen uh, UV uh, stuff, but yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Every time I start model, I do procedural. <laughs> Love it. Um, anyway, we will do some UV um, with Ryzen uh, next time. Uh, probably continue this one. Uh, because I need to create the extremity, uh, refine the size of this, adding some um, Boolean's operation to it to modify it, maybe change this, the shape of it of also here. 
make this much more as a box or as a tapered uh, chipset. So yeah, I will I will stop this uh, till now. So it should be okay. Um, yeah, of course. I, okay, so just for the fun, um, I will add another items. I will add a new merge. So here, merge. Connect the replicator because now we can now we can connect replicators to a merge mesh and now use the mirror okay we have a mirror it's not mirroring in the good directions so here we have setup with the case okay so better We have the mirror. We can define that we are mirroring on the Z, and now we have a chipset that is currently customizable. So now you just have to select an item, move it, and it it, it follow. Even if you select everything, for example, okay. It's following every, everywhere. So this is right. I mean, of course you can you can stop it. You can kill it quickly, but there is not so much connection into it, so it's normal. Okay, so should go back. Ah, too much. Sorry. Yeah. So we we'll close on this one and probably continue on the next uh, time on this procedural modeling on the ship set. Hope you enjoyed the, the stream. Uh, let me know on the YouTube channel. I will post it on the YouTube channel. So I'll see you. Bye bye. Yum yum!